In this video, we'll look at how to use R to perform some standard regression analysis using cross-section data. The example I'm going to use is example 11.1 .1 in the Econometric Analysis textbook by Green, the fifth edition. The data set he uses shows monthly credit card expenditure and associated variables for 100 individuals. Okay, so first thing is to load up the data into a data frame. And the data set is in a file here, table f9-1.csv, which can be downloaded from the internet. So I'm going to load that in using the read.csv uh, function, of course. If we look at the structure of the data, we can see that it has 100 observations, 100 cases, on seven variables. Some are numeric and some are dummy variable. Now in the example in uh, Green's textbook, he restricts the data set to only those individuals whose average expenditure is non-zero. So I need to subset the data with the subset command, only choosing those where average expenditure is not equal to zero. That now limits me to 72 observations on these variables. So now that we've got our data set imported, we can run the model. Now Green runs a linear regression of monthly expenditure as the dependent variable on a constant, age, income, and the square of income, and a dummy variable for home ownership. Now the function that is used in R to perform linear regression is LM, which stands of course for linear model. To run this, you supply a formula which describes the equation to be estimated. I'll come to that in a moment. And you tell it which data frame to use with the data equals option. So clearly I'm taking it here from data one, which is my subset of data. Now mod one here is the model. You can either put the model in here directly or as I've done here, put the model into a variable which you then include. So here's how you set up the actual equation to estimate. You put the name of the dependent variable, in this case average expenditure, a tilde, and then you specify the independent variables separated with plus signs. So my independent variables here are age, own rent, which is this dummy variable here, which indicates home ownership or not, income, and then green also includes the square of income. Now notice how you put variables in like that. If you want to put in squares or cubes or reciprocals or logs, you need to include that inside this I uh, and brackets notation. So you notice that you put I and then in brackets income square. There's the standard operator for raising to a power that inverted V, which of course is above the number six on the keyboard. So I'm going to store that formula, that model in a variable mod one, which I'm then going to include in the LM uh, function. So running this first, if we look in the environment, you'll see that that has created what's called a formula object, which contains this expression. I can now include that in the LM function. As I said, you could put this in directly into here, but I prefer to put it into a separate variable. So now I can run the model, estimate the equation. Now the results of this estimation are placed in this variable REGG1, which as I mentioned in previous video is simply a list. If we look down here in the environment, it's actually, in this case, an LM object, which is simply a, a type of list with various components, which could, of course, there be, therefore be accessed using the um, 
dollar notation that we used before. But in fact, you don't need to generally do that here because there are built-in functions which will access the key elements uh, for you. Now, before we do that, let's look at how do you actually see the basic results. All I've done here is store the results in this variable. Well, to see the basic regression results, use the summary command. So I'm using, I'm running summary on regg1. And as you can see, that gives me a pretty standard printout, the sort of thing you see in all econometric statistical packages of the results of this analysis. First of all, it tells you the um, command the, that you ran here, which could be used later to identify in these particular results. Then some summary information about the residuals. Then we get the standard table of coefficient estimates with their associated standard errors, p-values and uh, p-values. An indication here which are significant at particular levels. One star is 5%, two stars 10%, and so on. And then, of course, this summary uh, diagnostic information here, the residual standard error, the multiple r-squared, the adjusted r-squared, and the f-statistic. So that's a standard sort of printout. Now, as I say, this LM object contains other information which can be accessed. If you want to access the coefficient values and store them in a separate variable in a vector, you use the command here, the function coef. So running that will store the estimated coefficients in a vector called beta1. As you can see here, beta1 is a numeric vector which contains five values, which of course are these five estimated parameters. Should you want the fitted values, then those can be accessed through the fitted function. And here I'm storing them in, storing them in pred1. And if you want the residuals, then use the residuals function. Uh, notice it's residuals and then of course the name of the uh, LM object here, REGG1. And that stores the residuals in a vector. Again, you'll see these in your environment. Red, um, red one there and residual one there, both with 72 values, of course. And one reason why you might want to store the residuals and the fitted values and so on is so that you can plot them out. So now that we've got them in variables, we can easily use them in, say, plot command. So here I'm just going to plot the residuals. I'm not putting any additional parameters here to add a title and so on, as we, which you can do, of course, as we've seen in the video uh, uh, on graphs. So just a very basic graph here. That's a plot of the residuals. If you want to plot the value of one variable against another, a scatter graph, this is, you do it in this way. You put its plot command again, and you put the name of the uh, what variable you want to plot on the y-axis first, then a tilde, and then the one on the x-axis. So this will plot predicted values against actual values of average expenditure. Like that. Another one you might want to plot is residuals against predicted values. That's often used to look for heteroscedasticity. We're getting graphs here. Now, in fact, the, um, the plot command, uh, when it's applied to the LM object itself, the, the, the variable with your results in, by default plots out four graphs, which can be used for diagnostic purposes. Now, if you run plot REGG1 just on its own, then it will plot each graph in turn, and you'll find you have to press return here in the console to get the next one. It's much nicer to have all these four graphs it prints out arranged on a single chart in a two by two grid, so you can see them all in one go. Now to do that, you first of all have to change the default um, way graphs are plotted. As you can see at the moment, graphs are plotted individually, taking up the whole of this plot area. If you want to plot four graphs in a 2x2 two two grid, then you need to change that. 
to do that use the par command here or par function with this option mf row and then you set that equal to a vector saying how many rows and columns you want so if i want two rows and two columns a four two by two grid then obviously two comma two not it has to be in a little vector so that changes the default way of printing out graphs so that when i now run plot reg1 when i use the plot command on the lm object as you can see it plots out these four graphs in a nice two by two grid if i uh, expand that a little you'll see a little better again you actually do get the residuals versus fitted graph here so i didn't need to do that separately myself um, here you also get a norm, this thing which is, can be used to see if the residuals seem to be normally distributed and there's a couple of other uh, things here which can be used so now it's important that having done that if you to, to change it back to the default if you don't then it will continue to plot graphs in a two by two grid and if you only plot the one graph it'll just appear in the top left hand corner with all these other spaces black which will look odd so i'm going to run the par function again this time setting it back to one comma one one row one column in other words one graph okay let's uh, to complete this uh, first look at regression analysis let's show how you can run um, some specification tests now of course one of the things you often want to do is to test the joint significance of a number of variables we've seen here that the only two variables that appear to be significant are income and income squared age and own rent are not significantly different from zero individually on the t-test what you may want to do of course is to test whether these two variables which are individually significant are jointly significant a standard f test of um, a standard f exclusion test we're excluding variables to do that you use the ANOVA command here ANOVA function and that requires that you tell it the original model with all the variables in the unrestricted model as it's known and the restricted model with these two variables excluded so that means you have to estimate the restricted model now you could do that by running a linear regression again with a different model excluding these two variables another way which is uh, slightly quicker is to use the update function this will rerun the model you've just uh, done the function you've just the equation you've just estimated but you can tell it to omit variables so what you put as you can see is update and then in brackets the name of the object the anim object containing the results of your unrestricted model you then put formula dot equals now you put a dot here which means use the same dependent variable tilde and then a dot which means use the same independent ones but minus these two so it's saying use the same dependent variable average expenditure against the same independent ones but ignoring these two so that's what i want i want to rerun with those two missing now it's up to you whether you use the update function or whether you use the lm function to specify this um, restricted model so i'm using the update function here so running that and storing the results in resmod if i use the summary command as you can see it's run the model now but with income and income squared omitted so now that i've got two objects one with the restricted model one with the unrestricted i can run the f test of uh, testing the joint significance of these two variables and there we get the f test and uh, unsurprisingly these this the null hypothesis that these two variables are coefficients are jointly equal to zero is rejected it doesn't actually matter which way around you put these two models the i put the restricted first and the unrestricted but you could put them either way around so that's an f test a small sample test if you want to run a large sample chi-squared test then you can use the wald test uh, 
function, which is available in the uh, package LM test. Uh, LM test, in fact, is a really useful package which you're bound to use if you're running regression analysis. It contains most of the standard diagnostic and specification tests that you'll uh, want to run. So it's a very good package to install. So assuming you have it installed, let's load it into memory with the library command. And then we can now use the built-in vold test function, which is in, in LM test. Again, it's the syntax is similar to ANOVA. Uh, restricted model, unrestricted. But now you must also use this option, test equals, and then inverted commas, chi-square, to tell it to run a chi-square test. If you admit that, it'll just run the same f-test as the ANOVA uh, function. So running this gives me a chi-squared, a wall test. And again, on the same restriction, that these are jointly equal to zero. And again, obviously, that's rejected here too. So that shows how to do some basic regression analysis. Now, in the second part of this video, I'll look at how we can test some uh, for heteroscedasticity uh, and other diagnostic uh, tests.